and we will the kingfisher airlines and then we will talk about the case which was related to fortis i hope that you have studied these cases so before i initiate the discussion i expect that anyone from your side can initiate it we will start with tata group and then we will proceed to kingfisher and then fortis yes anyone of you who has read about tata case is my voice clear to all yes sir okay thank you yes who has read about tata tata it's a very it was a very famous case सर कल आपने टाटा केस लगभग डिस्कस कर लिया था सर आधे से ऊपर अच्छा बाद में क्या हुआ कौन बताएगा आधा हो गया आधा किसी के पास टाइम नहीं है पढ़ने के लिए है ना वाह सर कॉम्प्लीट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट तक आया था मतलब टाटा और शंकर जी पालन जी विल डिफरेंट होगा तो उनके जो टाटा के जो डॉक्यूमेंट्स थे सर वो सापो जी पालन जी यूज कर रहे थे ऐसा टाटा ने क्लेम किया था क्योंकि वो टाटा ग्रुप का कुछ डॉक्यूमेंट है लेकिन सापो जी पालन जी कह रहे थे कि नहीं हमने ऐसा कुछ नहीं किया लेकिन फिर भी वो वैसा हो रहा था सर जैसा टाटा का क्लेम था सो ओनली वन स्टूडेंट वॉज हैविंग टाइम टू रीड अबाउट द केस अदर्स वर वेरी मच बिजी ओके सो वी विल नॉट गो इन टू दैट नो प्रॉब्लम yes so tata group of companies as we had discussed a major part of the case yesterday only so there was a dispute and that dispute was between tata sons that is the board of the tata group of companies which controls the entire tata conglomerate there was difference between the chairman of tata group the existing chairman that was mr cyrus mistri and the board the main dispute was related to the functioning of the chairman now as tata group has some different working style or functioning style whereas mr cyrus mistri who had come from shaporji palonji his company might be having different functioning style so he came with that style and he could not adopt the tata group style into the functioning that was one of the major reason two three reason we had already discussed so in all these three four reasons were there which led to the dispute and the dispute was not amicably settled between the chairman and the tata board 
that dispute went to the industrial tribunal because the board removed the chairman of tata group that is mr cyrus mistri could not complete his tenure <coughs> as chairman of tata group of companies in the middle only he was removed by the board so he thought that his removal was not proper so he filed a complaint in the tribunal and the case was there in the tribunal and then it was finally decided by the tribunal that his removal was legal his removal was as per the rules and regulations of existing companies act so that was one of the major case which every one of us should be aware of now we will move on to the second major case that we are going to discuss and that case is related to kingfisher airlines kingfisher airlines was a company which was owned by a company which is called as united breweries now this united breweries was a company which was doing business in beverages <clears throat> every one of us have heard the name kingfisher beer kingfisher soda kingfisher water so these type of beverages product the company used to produce before starting with the kingfisher airlines now the owner of kingfisher airlines or united breweries every one of us is aware of he is mr vijay malya he is a person who can be seen in ipl matches in page 3 parties <clears throat> because of his lavish lifestyle he is widely reported in the media print media as well as the other forms of media social media or television he is widely reported now we are going to discuss how this company had to be closed within a period of 10 years now in 2003 mr vijay malya who was doing a very good business with united breweries he thought that he should start a airline as he was expanding his business so in 2003 he created or he started kingfisher airlines this airline was operationalized in the year 2005 and in the year 2009 this airline bought air deccan air deccan <clears throat> i don't know uh, if you are aware of or it, if not air deccan at that particular time in 2008 and 9 it was a airline which was considered as the cheapest airline in late 
there was a trend in the airline industry aviation industry and every industry or also every air uh, line company was competing with each other to reduce the prices of aviation fare and air deccan was considered as the airline which was considered as the cheapest airline ads were released at that particular time and they started comparing their air fares with the fares of railways that our air fare is at par with the railway ticket of ac ac railway ticket and this is how they started promoting their airlines so in late 2000s the air aviation business or airline business was at boom it was growing so vijay malya who has started this who has entered into this business in 2005 and within a period of 3 4 years the kingfisher airline was doing very good business when he bought this deccan airways at that time kingfisher airline was number 2 in india so it was at the top and there vijay malya thought that he should expand the airline more and he should become the number one player in the country and that was the reason why he purchased air deccan now air deccan was the cheapest airline to make the fare cheaper the airline was the first airline the deccan airline was the first airline which made various changes in the airline industry their domestic flights did not provided did not provide the lunch facility or snacks facility or other items so to reduce their fare they cut short on various things and that particular changes worked because if a person wants to travel for say 1 hour or 2 hour a person wants to travel say from mumbai to ahmedabad and if the time is to be taken is a time taken is 1 hour or more than that so for that period the person was attracted towards the fare if one company is charging 10000 rupees and the other company is providing the same facility or the same uh, uh, ticket for 5000 or 6000 rupees then most of the people started getting attracted towards these type of airlines so in 2009 when he purchased this deccan airways he became one of the top airline it became uh, the kingfisher airline became the second most the uh, or the second most favored airline of indian passengers so the company started making profits there were number of changes made in the kingfisher airlines investments were made new planes were ordered by the kingfisher airlines and for this expansion 
Mr. Vijay Mallya took a very heavy loan from various banks. He took loan from Yuko Bank, Central Bank, State Bank of India, and other banks. And because of his lavish lifestyle, he started spending money. The money which he was getting as loan from the bank to be used for his business expansion, he started using for his personal use, for purchasing property for personal use, for foreign investment, for his lavish parties. Now, one more thing you might be aware of that Kingfisher or Vijay Malya was often known for the Kingfisher calendars. Kingfisher calendar which features the top celebrity of the country and it also includes the top models of the country as well as outside the country. So you used to call top models all over the world and they used to conduct a photo shoot and they used to come up with a calendar which was called as Kingfisher calendar and a huge amount was invested in that. So what has happened is, as both the companies was doing well, his parent company, United Breweries, as well as the Kingfisher Airline were doing well, he started spending more and more and more money on his personal lifestyle. So parties were conducted in five star or seven stars. And that was one of the reason why the downfall started taking place. Mr. Vijay Malya started concentrating more on these type of activities than looking after the day-to-day -day business activities of his companies. So he was found more in parties as compared to be in the offices of the Kingfisher Airlines or United Breweries. So when he started taking less interest in the working of his companies, there were problems and he ignored those problems. The loan started increasing because every loan came with interest. And instead of repaying the loan, he started taking more loan. And he forgot that he need to repay the loan and that too with interest. When all these things were happening, slowly, by 2011, the company started reporting loss. It was clear that now the Kingfisher airline is not a profit-making airline. It has started with losses and the losses were huge and in 2012 october 2012 was the period when the court grounded all the flights of kingfisher airline their flying license were cancelled by the court 
so all the investment which was made during that particular time the planes those that were purchased the maintenance crew the flight crew the other employees of the kingfisher airlines they had no work now so revenue was stopped no revenue was generated after 2000 uh, october 2012 planes were purchased with the money which was through uh, which was <clears throat> generated through loans from various banks as the flights were not moving no money was there no income was coming the banks realized that now they have to act swiftly to recover the money because he was not in a mood to return their money he was not returning the money the bank started uh, started sending uh, vijay malya notices that you have to repay a loan of this much of amount with interest of this and mr malya started ignoring those notices also and in 2012 the entire company came down the kingfisher uh, airline was grounded now how to recover this money the banks they approached the uh, debt recovery tribunal drt it is called as so debt recovery tribunal they approached and they filed a case against mr vijay malya for recovery of amount and that amount with interest was more than 9000 crores so the bank wanted 9000 crores back from mr vijay malya now here before the bank filing the case of recovery the enforcement directorate that is ed now everyone is aware of what ed is because in news for the last 2 3 years we can often hear about the raids which are conducted by ed now ed is an organization which is directly reporting to ministry of finance as we are aware of what is the job of police what is the job of cbi or cid that if police is unable to solve the case the case may proceed to cid within that particular state if the cid is also unable to solve the particular case at the central level it proceeds to cbi same is the case with the misappropriation of money if a company or if a businessman or if a person is misappropriating his finance then or he is not following the rules laid down under various laws regarding how you can uh, file your returns if these rules are not followed then the organization which conducts the inquiry is called as ed or enforcement directorate it's an organization which directly reports to ministry of finance government of india now this ed has already initiated the inquiry that how a person can spend so much of loan amount on his personal use instead of spending that amount in the development of his organization so how much of miss 
appropriation of funds was done that enquiry for that enquiry the ministry of finance has instructed the enforcement directorate to conduct that enquiry now as all the banks wanted the money back they filed a case in a debt recovery tribunal at bangalore after hearing and after going through all the evidences the bank ruled in favor of uh, sorry the tribunal gave the ruling in favor of the bank that yes you can recover 9000 crore or more than 9000 crore from mr vijay malya there were number of banks 8 to 10 banks were there who were who had given loan to mr vijay malya major players were yuko bank central bank and state bank of india now here in the judgment the tribunal very clearly mentioned that if he is unable to repay the loan the bank is given a authority they can sell the property of mr vijay malya and the company that is kingfisher airline and they can recover their amount now when the banks went to sell the property of mr vijay malya and kingfisher airlines they realized that the entire property of the company and mr vijay malya has been already sealed by enforcement directorate it is already sealed by enforcement directorate so if a government again now this dlt is a government organization that is death recovery tribunal whereas enforcement directorate or ed is also a government organization now there was a conflict between these two organizations that if one organization has already attached all the property how the other organization can pass an order to sell it and because of that dispute again there were problems and because of that then again there is one more organization and the banks when they realized that as the property is already attached by enforcement directorate and enforcement directorate is not ready to transfer that property to the banks so that the banks can sell the property and recover their loans why because of the reason that ed's enquiry is still pending they are still in uh, conducting the inquiry now when the banks were unable to recover their loan in spite of the ruling by the debt recovery tribunal they decided that they should go to some other organization or some other board then they formed a consortium consortium means when number of banks come together or number of organizations come together and then when they form a group that is called as consortium so all these 9 10 banks they formed a group so that particular group or consortium they again filed a case in the tribunal which was related it is called as uh, under the uh, pmlt act pmlt act is prevention of money laundering act so for this particular body this particular body 
for this particular uh, organization which is formed again by the government it deals with the cases of which are related to money laundering money laundering uh, we all are aware of what is money laundering when the money which we are earning is not recorded properly is not shared with the government agencies properly the details of that then it is termed as money laundering so it was again under the prevention of money laundering act it was clear that yes mr vijay malya was involved into money laundering why because he was getting the loan or he got the loan for the use of for uh, to be used on his business activities but most of the loan he used to or he used on his personal things he bought properties he bought planes for personal use yacht for personal use he was involved in various parties for personal use so that was it was decided that yes he is a person who is who or who was into money laundering so the judgment was passed that okay he is involved in the money laundering but his company okay one company is not over it is proved that now this company is finished kingfisher airlines but his earlier company or his parent company that is united breweries was still making profits and mr vijay malya was having 36% stake in united breweries so prevention of money laundering act under that the tribunal gave the authority to the consortium of banks which has provided loan to mr vijay malya that you can sell this 36% of his shares and recover the compensation now this 36% shares they were around 6000 crore rupees so the option was that instead of 9000 crore at least 6000 crores can be recovered by the bank the remaining 3000 crores can be recovered once the ed enquiry is over by selling the property of the kingfisher airlines so why the delay took place why the go nationalized banks we are not talking about private banks most of the banks were nationalized banks why nationalized banks struggled to recover their loan and the reason which was given was the existence of multiple organizations which were created by the government to monitor or for controlling the activities of business entities ed is there sebi is there debt recovery tribunal is there then again one more tribunal is there which looks after prevention of money which looks after prevention of money laundering so these four five government agencies are there and it was proved that these agencies do not have coordination in themselves 
as they do not have coordination in themselves it becomes difficult for the banks also banks are nationalized banks nationalized means they are having authority or they are having support of the government itself when government organizations are unable to recover their money then how a private organization if gets involved or private money lenders who have given loan to the defaulter companies how they are going to recover their funds so these are some of the issues which has led to the changes in the present corporate governance structure if you have multiple organizations you have to make sure that each and every organization is coordinating with each other if ed is not coordinating with sebi and if ed is not coordinating or not accepting the order of debt recovery tribunal if debt recovery tribunal and the prevention of money laundering tribunal they are not coordinating effectively then it is very difficult it is very difficult for the banks to recover their money from 2016 mr vijay malya everyone is aware of that he is in U united kingdom uk he is there in uk he is living a very good decent life there why the indian organizations are unable to get him back and why he there is a delay in his trial and the reason is very simple because of multiple organizations which are after him and there is no coordination in those organizations and these offenders they take advantages of these loopholes agar hamare beech mein hi coordination nahi hai to uska fayda zarur koi uthata hai aur usi wajah se bahut sare jo offenders hain jo bahar ja ke baith gaye hain jinhone karodon ka ghotala kiya hai जो आज भी अच्छी लाइफ जी रहे कंपनी इज इन टू लॉसेस बट दे हैव नॉट सफर्ड लॉसेस कंपनी हैज सफर्ड शेयर होल्डर्स हैज सफर्ड इन्वेस्टर्स हैज सफर्ड बिकॉज ऑफ देयर फॉल्ट बट वॉट दे हैव डन इज दे हैव गॉन अब्रॉड एंड दे आर टेकिंग द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ द लूप होल्स now to to cover up these loopholes kaise seekhte ek case se fir seekha jata hai acha ye galti ho rahi hai kya fir isko change karte hain ye galti ho rahi hai kya fir isko change karte hain this way there are changes being made in corporate governance that we are going to discuss in this subject that how earlier the structure in india of corporate governance was and now how the uh, structure has changed so that was uh, the reason uh, that was the case of kingfisher airlines and now we will move on to the next case and that case is related to fortis yes anybody who has read about fortis case फोर्टिस केस के बारे में अगर किसी ने पढ़ा हो तो यस सर वो इज दिस ओमकार अच्छा ओमकार अच्छा वेट वेट ओमकार एनी वन एल्स 
who has read about fortis yes sir the case was fortis was fortis uh... yes who is this sir jay shri is here ha ah, jay shri yes yes jay shri go ahead sir uh, malvinder or the uh, 21 सितंबर 2016 को uh, 16 के मुताबिक मलविंदर और शिवेंद्र uh, भारत के रईसो रईसो पर 12 नंबर पर थे okay. और uh, 24 सितंबर uh, 2018 तक इन दोनों भाइयों ने uh, 22,500 करोड़ रुपए और अपना पूरा पूरा कारोबार गवा दिया गवा दिया था हाँ तो सेवन दिसंबर 2018 दोनों भाइयों ने एक दूसरे पर मारपीट के आरोप लगाए थे ओके okay. और मलविंदर मोहन सिंह और शिविंद्र मोहन सिंह दो कारोबारी कारोबारी भाई बर्बर बर्बदी तक आने से पहले दोनों के साथ दोनों ने साथ काम किया था और और उन्होंने खूब कामयाबी उनकी काम कामयाबी लोगों ने देखी थी और कभी दोनों भाइयों दोनों भाइयों को झगड़ते नहीं देखा था और 4 सितंबर और 4 सितंबर 2018 को शिविंद्र ने बड़े भाइयों पर मुकदमा चलाने की अर्जी लगाई थी ओके और नेशनल कंपनी लॉ ट्रिब्यूनल में उन्होंने मलविंदर पर जालसाजी को प्रबंधन और उत्पीड़न का इल्जाम लगाया था ओके वेरी गुड कि भैया ने मेरी बीवी आदित्य आदित्य के जा, जारी दस्तखत करवाए और मलविंदर और मलविंदर और रेली रेली गियर के पूर्व चेयरमैन सुनील गोदनामी पर कंपनी को कर्ज में डालने का इल्जाम लगाया था ये पहली बार था जब दोनों भाइयों के बीच कड़वाहट देखी गई थी ओके वेरी गुड वेरी गुड बड़ा आपने अच्छे से और यस सर इससे पहले इससे पहले लोग उनकी आर्थिक बर्बादी देख चुके थे और अपनी ही कंपनी फोर्टिस्ट और रेलगियर में अपना मालिकाना हक खो दिया था उन्होंने कर्ज चुकाने के लिए उन्होंने अपने शेयर बैंकों में गिर भी रखे थे कर्ज नहीं चुका पाए तो कंपनी को हेलो हेलो अपने yes. गिरवी शेयर्स को जब्त कर लिया गया था और हाँ. कुल मिलाकर उन्होंने सब गवा दिया और उनकी ये बर्बादी की कहानी बड़ी अजीब है इतना अन और अविभाजित अमृतसर में दो चचेरे भाई थे रंजित और गुरबक्स हाँ उनकी पेरेंट कंपनी क्या थी कौन सी कंपनी है मेन किसके कंपनी का नाम क्या है फोर्टिस इज व्हाट व्हाट इज फोर्टिस फोर्टिस सर रैनबैक्स रैनबैक्स ही नाम है सर उस कंपनी का ओके हां और इन 1947 में उन्हें ये कंपनी बेच बेचनी पड़ी थी बटवारे रावल पेंडी में दिल्ली आए थे वो भाई मोहन सिंह ने उनकी कंपनी खरीद ली थी वहा इस कंपनी ने खूब तरक्की की थी तो वेरी गुड यू हैव रेड द केस द केस वाज रिलेटेड टू मनविंदर मलविंदर सिंह and shivinder singh two brothers were there who inherited the business of renbexi pharma renbexi every one of us is aware of it was the top most drug manufacturing company in india this company was established in the year 1937 and then after independence or in 70s and 80s the company 
<clears throat> reached the foreign countries also. In late 90s and early 2000s, the company Renbaxi was doing good business not only in India. In India, it was the top drug manufacturer. But in US, in United States of America also, this company was considered as one of the best company which was creating or which was making the generic drugs. So, sirf India mein hi nahi. India mein toh ye ek number company thi, number one company thi. Par US mein bhi, ek respected, ek reputed company ke tarah usko mana jata tha, jo generic drugs mein deal karti thi. That was Renbaxi. Now, Malvinder Singh and Shivinder Singh, they got this company from their parents, from their father. As the company was doing very good business, and as Jayashree has mentioned that in 2016, they were included as the richest or top uh, 100 or top 10 richest people in India, both the brothers, as their company was the top company, they decided to expand their business. As the company was dealing in manufacturing of drugs or medicines, they started concentrating on the healthcare industry. And there, they started investing in the healthcare industry in the name of Fortis Hospital. Fortis Hospital is a chain of hospitals which was controlled by these two brothers. They started investing more and more money in expanding this Fortis chain of hospitals. The second investment which they made was a financial institution in the name of Rally Gear Industry. So Rally Gear and Fortis Hospitals they started with. Now, when the company was doing very good, when the company was uh, market value of the company was around 20,000 or 22,000 crores. At that time, they sold their share in Renbaxi to a Japanese firm, Daichi. And they got a huge amount, more than 9,000 crores they recovered or uh, they got from the deal from the Japanese company. That company was also, that Daichi was uh, dealing in uh, uh, this pharma pharmaceutical industry only. They got the amount from Daichi company. And they invested the major portion of this 9,000 crore in rally gear and some part that is around 3,000 crore in expanding the Fortis chain of hospitals. Later on in 2008, 9, 10, when there was slowdown in entire world, the recession started taking place. And because of that recession, there was loss to both the companies. The farmers, uh, the healthcare, uh, Fortis Healthcare, as well as the Ready Gear, the financial institution. So the money which they had received from 
that deal of selling their stake in Renbaxi. They invested that money in these two companies, and because of recession, both the companies started making losses. As the companies were into losses, the rally gear was completely handled by the MD and CEO, that is Mr. Budhani Jayshree. What was his name? Kya naam tha Rally Gear ka jo handle kar raha tha? I am unable to recall that name. Budhani or Badhani something. So that person was there who was handling the entire Rally Gear company. And the investments which the Rally Gear was making was not or were later on proved that they were not the correct investments. And because of those investments, the company started making losses. In 2018 or from 2016 itself, they uh, the uh, case were filed by one brother against the another brother that is for misappropriation of funds or how uh, the signatures of uh, the younger brother's wife was taken by the elder brother. So all these cases started taking place. And when the case was finally analyzed and the reason for the failure of the topmost pharma company in country, when the failure was find, uh, found out, and the reason was, very simple reasons were there, and the reasons listed were that Renbaxi was one of the company which was known all over the world more for innovation in new drugs. Innovation in drugs. So their research and development team was considered as the best in the world, not only in the country, but the research and development team of the Renbaxi was considered as the best in the world. And when these two brothers started concentrating more on the other two firms that is Rally Gear and Fortis Healthcare or Fortis Hospitals. They started ignoring their parent company that is Renbaxi. And the most neglected department was the research and development department. So as the research and development, which was the core of Renbaxi, which was the most important department of the Renbaxi, and for research and development, the company has to devote more capital, more authority, and more flexibility to its team. And that was not given. The time when their father was handling this company, entire focus was on research and development. After taking over the company from their father, for some period, they concentrated more on research and development. But later on, they started giving more concentration on these two companies. Then they started completely ignoring the research and development. In US also, it was highlighted that the best part of Renbaxi is their research and development. And when these things started taking place, then the main team or the core team of research and development, which was there in the company for last so many years, the head of research and development, the other core team members 
of research and development they started resigning from the company and they resigned from the company they joined some other company when the company changes or loses or uh, uh, focuses very less on its core research and development was the department which made renbeck see the topmost drug making company in the country and when you just ignore your the core department then please remember that the company will start losing profit in the long term and that was the case with renbeck the second problem with the brothers were that they completely believed in the ceo and md who was appointed now this ceo and md was not appointed on the basis of his merits this person was appointed on the recommendation of somebody when the highest authority is not appointed on the basis of his merit but when the highest authority is appointed on the basis of merit uh, on the basis of recommendation of somebody that okay he is my person just appoint him as your md i i know that he will be very good you have to believe in me so without checking his uh qualities or uh, his uh, previous experience the person was appointed as the ceo and the managing director of relegate who came from the entire different industry now this relegate was a financial institution completely <coughs> a different industry now the ceo mr badhani or budhani who was appointed he had a experience of leather industry he his business was from leather industry he uh, had companies or factories which were producing leather so leather manufacturing and managing finance they are two different industries so if a person who is not having enough experience on how to control these financial entities all of a sudden if this person is given this responsibility there are more chances that the decision which were taken which is take which will be taken by this particular person may backfire also and that was the exa- that was exactly which happened the decisions backfired and the company was into troubles so these two major reasons were there for the failure of fortis and this case is not really called as a failure of renbaxi but it is called as a fortis case why it is called as fortis case because the entire focus was on two companies under fortis uh, and that is uh, fortis healthcare and the relegare financial institution and the entire authority was given to the ceo both the brothers they were not actively involved in these decision making yes signatures were taken but they were not actively involved in the day to day management of the company they completely believed in the ceo that whatever he will be doing as he has got the recommendation from a particular person they believed in that particular person that he is not going to uh, do he cannot do anything wrong so he is uh, just like uh, what we can say is uh, both the brothers 
believed in that person the, the name of the person was mr dillon now mr dillon is a, a sort of say a preacher jaise hum log bolte hai na guru to jo dillon hai वो एक गुरु जी है जिसके काफी सारे आश्रम है ये दोनों भाई भी उसी महाराज जो डिलन महाराज है उनके काफी अनुयायी टाइप है उनके डिसाइपल्स है तो डिल्लन महाराज ने बोला कि ये मिस्टर जो बुधानी है ये आपका कंपनी बहुत अच्छे से संभाल सकते हैं इनको आप अपॉइंट कर दो महाराज जी के कहने पर अपॉइंट कर दिया गया पर क्योंकि उनको एक्सपीरियंस नहीं था इसीलिए जो उन्होंने डिसीजन लिए वो बैकफायर हुए और कंपनी को लॉस तो ऐसे अगर बिजनेस कोई करता है तो लॉस निश्चित है आप अपना कोर फोकस छोड़ देते हो अपने कोर लोगों को छोड़ देते हो जिन लोगों ने रैन बैक्सी को टॉप कंपनी बनाया उन लोगों को आपने निकाल दिया उन लोगों को आपने जाने दिया और महाराज के कहने पर अगर आप किसी को लेकर आते हैं जिस व्यक्ति को एक्सपीरियंस भी नहीं है ऐसा व्यक्ति शायद ज्यादातर केस में वो प्रॉफिटेबल डिसीजन नहीं ले पाएगा और यही चीज हुई और ये मेन रीजन रहा फेलियर ऑफ फोर्टिस का तो जिस कंपनी का मार्केट वैल्यू बाईस हजार करोड़ था जिन भाइयों का बाद में वो बैंक रप्ट के कगार पे आ गए सो दैट वाज द केस रिलेटेड टू रैली केयर राइट सो आई थिंक वी हैव कवर्ड ऑल द केसेस इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन वी विल स्टार्ट विद द कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नेंस दैट इज यूनिट वन ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नेंस सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आर फर्स्ट यूनिट वी हैव आई थिंक वी हैव कंप्लीटेड आर यूनिट नंबर फाइव if anything is remaining please check with your syllabus if anything or any of the case is remaining please uh, bring it to my notice we will discuss that particular case and we will complete that case and then we will proceed with the first unit so five unit uh, as per as uh, i think uh, first unit is already we have completed our first unit so thank you everyone for joining today's session we will uh, in the next section we will start with the first unit thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir